It is an uh, honor to be here. I know some of you and uh, have uh, worked uh, with many of you in different facets of, of ministry opportunities. So it's good to be here. Now, I know I have a, kind of a limited time. Uh, if I had um, more time, I would start with a story. And if I had time to start with a story, uh, it would be like one fourth touching emotional terror, you know, pull at your heartstrings type story. And then it would be like three fourths hilarious because it would. And as I told this story, that was almost all hilarious. Um, you would laugh very hard. Um, as a matter of fact, some of you would laugh so hard you would probably pull something. And, um, but all of you would be uh, distracted through the rest of my presentation thinking about who you can share this story with because it was literally the funniest story you've ever heard. And, and some of you would even pull out your phones and pull up a Facebook and, 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 and start retelling the story so that all your Facebook friends would hear. Now, obviously, you wouldn't tell it quite as good as I would, but you would do, a, you would do an okay job of it, and, and you, would, you would share it, and you would hashtag it, maybe funniest story I've literally ever heard in my entire life, which would be a very long hashtag, but, but you would do that. And, and then other people would read it and laugh and, and, and just you know, pull something, and then, and then they would share it with their friends, and then they would share it with their friends. By like Wednesday, it would be this national topic that everybody, you know, some famous people had gotten a hold of it and reshared it and laughed. And by Friday, Jimmy Fallon's talking about it, and 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 I sell, you know, thousands more books. And 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 you all just have this story that you can tell your grandkids and your and your great grandkids. But obviously, we don't have time for that. So, um, so I'm we're not going to start with that. But I will tell you this that that is how social media works. It starts, with them, it starts with one thing, and it goes from here to here to here, and it goes out and out and out. Now, if it's a fun, hilarious story, then that's great that everybody can, uh, can experience. But if it's not a funny story, if it's something that tears someone down or, or, um, or separates relationships or uh, really hurts somebody in their uh, pursuit of being the person that God created them to be, then there may be a problem. And so that's a little bit about what we're going to talk about. Now, as Ben said, uh, I've got this book called Selfie, A Parent's Guide to Social Media. And, and it's available. He's setting them back up in the back. It was out here at the tent earlier. And uh, I'm only going to touch on parts of the book today for, because of this time that we have. So um, I, will, I will tell you parts that I uh, have not touched on, but I hope that you'll get the book for the purposes of getting kind of the full uh, picture. Now, there are kind of two parts to this conversation. And I am only addressing the information side of this conversation. There's, there's the information and then there's behavior. So information says this is what social media does and this is how kids use it. And here's how you can help kids, help your kids be safer and uh, healthier online. But then there's this whole other side of it that's behavior related. Why do kids do the things that they do? And how does social media... Um, make it easier for kids to bully other kids online, for a, a, a boy to, to, um, to send messages about a, a, a classmate that really tears him down and, and embarrasses him? Or why does a girl send an inappropriate picture to a boy? And both both of the, those examples may, may come from, and will do come from an insecurity um, that that teen is dealing with. And so there's the behavior side. This book really deals with the information side because the behavior side is a longer conversation to have, and it's really a discipleship issue. And so as we talk about the information, you can start to continue the conversation about the behavior. Um, now, I refer to... Um, well, let me, let me start with this quote. Social media has made the web all about me, me, me. And this is, 
right where we are because, you, as you know, we live in a very um, individualized world. And, and so everything is about me and I, and we have iPods and iPads and iPhones and I everything because everything is about how I can have what I want and social media really kind of plays in this. And so where kids today is the same as kids in, in our generations um, long for relationships and love and encouragement and hope and purpose, this world of I, this individualistic world, really stunts that growth. And social media kind of can play into that. And so I called the book Selfie for that reason. The word selfie is, was the 2013 word of the year. Really, whatever that means. I mean, I don't know who came up with that, but I'm sure that's something we're all kind of proud of, I guess. Um, and so I refer to social media as the 21st century glass house. The 21st century glass house. Now, this is a place that feels very private, but yet is very public. And if you live in a glass house, you may feel the security of being home, but yet your walls are made of glass so everybody can see what you're doing. In the 21st century glass house, thrown rocks can cause cracks, and those cracks are very hard to mend. And I think we, many of us, know people that because of this social media world, this 21st century glass house, we know people that have had cracks in that glass, and those, that glass is extremely hard to mend because it's so public. And so social media can prevent uh, kids from really being who they are. They really can create an unhealthy uh, identity issues. As, like I said, uh, a kid that's fighting insecurities, some of these platforms really promote that rather than help them be who they are. They can, um, it's easy for them to see themselves as the image that they put up on these social media platforms. So when, when we're on Facebook or something, we only tell the good stories. We only put up the good pictures. We don't tell the other part of who we are. We don't tell about the stuff we're struggling with, especially teenagers. And so they begin to believe the image of what they're putting out in the public what they're hanging in front of that glass house for everyone else to see rather than who they are. It can also promote uh, unhealthy uh, community involvement because um, an online relationship can only go so deep. And, and, and so when social media enhances real relationships, then that can be an okay thing, but when it works the other way around, it's, it's extremely, can be unhealthy, and then these kids who are just already naturally insecure as a teenager is, they get these friend requests and these follows and these likes and these co positive comments based on this image that they put up, and it helps build them up in an artificial way. Social media can also um, give us unhealthy time usage there's a statistic that says that kids between 8 and 18 can, uh, will use a media device seven and a half hours a day. Now, I never was really good at math, but if you're in school eight hours a day and you may sleep, I don't know, five, six, seven hours a day, and then you're, of course, on your device for seven and a half hours a day, you're, you're running out of day. And to do anything that's that's healthy or productive, and so this is why this important this this is why this topic is important to understand. Here's the good news for you: you don't have to be Einstein to understand social media. Okay, so that's what I hope that this book will help do. the The chapter two of the book is called Social Media One on One, and so I want to start there for a minute. Social media is a website or an online application short for app, that allows for interaction and networking. Now understand we have people here that have apps. They know how to use them. 
we might have somebody here that knows how to design an app. But we also probably have a few of you who aren't quite sure how to spell app. <laughs> and so everywhere in between. So we're starting with this definition. It allows for interaction. It's a website or online application that allows for interaction networking. There are over 200 active websites that identify themselves as social media. Now, not all of those are for kids, and not all of them are specifically dangerous, but, but that's a lot. And so to help you understand this, let's look at two websites that you're probably all very familiar with, Google and Facebook. So, so we got Google.com and Facebook.com. Now, Google is where you go and find things. It's an index. So if you want to know about websites on cats, you type in cats, and it'll take you to you know, a million websites on cats. You can't interact with Google at all from that way. You can only put in something and find out where something is. You can't influence Google.com at all. Facebook's the completely other way around. If you don't influence it, then you're not using it. And so you have friends and you have people that you interact with and you share comments and pictures and, and, and uh, videos and you make comments to other people and you, you interact and it's a, it's a community. And so you can see that they're completely different. So I know that a lot of you, uh, your kids know way more about this stuff than you do. And even without thinking about it, you are raising a social media mogul. And so here's just a couple things to, um, what to know when you're raising a social media mogul. First of all, um, kids use social media differently than adults do. And this is an important point because what we do, you know, we may have Facebook and we interact with, we keep up with our friends in college, from college, you know, or we see the vacation pictures of our good friends and, and we enjoy um, taking a few minutes of our day and, and, and looking what everybody else has said and, and um, commenting on that and it's, it's, it's at that level usually for most of us. Kids, it's completely different. It's an extension of their community and it's an extension of their social identity. It's a deeper issue for teenagers than it is for adults. Social media <coughs> is constantly changing with new platforms. In chapter three of this book, Selfie, I give the 10, what I consider the 10 most popular social media platforms for teenagers. And I spent a few pages on each one. Now, if I can, if I were to write this book two years from now, that list would probably most likely be different because some have come and gone and some have been added. So social media is constantly changing. And then this point, and I hope you all will, 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 um, will take this to heart. Kids that can be trustworthy, kids that are trustworthy, smart, and obedient in normal life, find themselves, can find themselves in harmful and compromising positions online. So you can't say, well, you know, my, my kid's really a good kid, never really gets in trouble, therefore this is not something that I'm going to have to deal with. Because sometimes it's that kid that either finds themselves in this, in this place and didn't see it coming, or thinks that they're in the secure walls of a private place, not knowing that those walls are made of glass. And so what to, what, what to watch out for? Dangerous people can hang out on these sites, sometimes posing as teenagers. So the advice to your kid in this part is to never allow somebody to follow you or to be your friend on one of these sites, someone that you don't know. Despite popular thought, all pictures posted online potentially live forever. I've known lots of people that have um, graduated from college and gone to get a job. Job interviewers now look back at these social media sites. They look at Instagram and they see the, the spring break pictures that he or she posted five years ago. And that creates a question of integrity or a question of behavior. I've known people not to get these kind of jobs because of that. Posted content like texts, like messages and, and, and pictures and video can be seen by 
people that the user is not directly connected to, someone that's not their friend or follower, through this rabbit hole effect. And I'll tell you what this is. Let's say um, four people that there's a picture that's, po that, that's posted on Facebook of four kids. And let's say I know one of them. I'm, I'm on Facebook friends with one of the four, and the other three I don't know. They're from somewhere else, and I don't know them. I'm not connected with them online. But they're all tagged, which means they have a, a, a Facebook or Instagram or something, and you can, you can put their name there, and it'll connect back to their site. And so there's four people in this picture. I only know one of them, but they're all tagged. So I click on a tag of somebody I don't know, and it takes me to their Instagram page. If their Instagram page is public, which is the default for Instagram, then I can look through all their things. I can look through all their pictures. Now I start looking through the pictures and I start clicking on tags and it takes me to someone else's page. It takes me to someone else. It might even change from Facebook to Instagram or, or back and forth. Before I know it, I can be 10 plus relationships deep. Looking at pictures and content and messages and videos of people that I am 10 relationships removed from. And that's the rabbit hole effect. The advice there is if your child has Instagram, they need to have it as set as private. It's an easy flip of a switch, and then everything becomes, you can't see it unless they're a follower. Here's one parents don't ever know about. The Children Online Privacy Protection Act, also called COPA, restricts uh, individuals under the age of 13 from having a social media platform. If your child is 12 or, or younger, they are not supposed to be on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or any of these other sites. I'll talk more about that in a second. Next, cyberbullying and sexting are real and very, very common. You possibly know some people that have been a part of some of, the, some of those interactions. Chances are you know somebody and you may not know that they have been a part of it. You may know of, of a public example but I would say everybody in here knows of a family that has had to deal with this uh, that has teenagers uh, in the last year or so, we could say. Uh, teenagers are notorious about hiding their identity online through secret or secondary pro profiles. Here's what used to, used to be um, back when Facebook was the, the site. Um, kids, I knew some kids actually that back years ago that had two Facebook pages. They had the one with their first and last name. Mom and dad were friends and uncle and aunts were friends and everybody knew about it and they put picture, you know, had pictures of the family at Easter and all that stuff. Then they had one with their like first name and middle name and, and it was very secure and you couldn't really search for it and only their friends were there. Now what they do is they just keep Facebook as the public default for all adults and they do all their interactions on Snapchat or on, you know, Instagram or on any of these other sites that, that, that uh, are hard to get to. So what in the book, in Chapter 3, I present what I consider the 10 most popular social media sites. Um, today, I'm just going to touch on four of those um, because of time. But um, I'll tell you, the ones that I'm going to mention today are Instagram, Snapchat, Yik Yak, and Whisper. The ones that are also in the book, but I'm not going to spend time on, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Tumblr, Ask.fm, and Kick Messenger. Okay, so you can find out there's at least two, not three pages on each one um, of each of these ten. But I'm going um, to talk about Instagram, Snapchat, Yik Yak, and Whisper because I think these are ones that, um, well, Instagram is one that probably all of your kids are are either involved with or going to be, um, the other ones are ones you just really need to know about. Um, okay, so Instagram. <clears throat> Instagram is a, um, allows users to post pictures and videos, short 15 second videos, um, and then share it with their Instagram followers. And they can also share that on other platforms like Twitter or Facebook um, or Tumblr or, or any of those. Um, now, even though Facebook is still technically the most commonly used social media platform for teenagers, for anybody, and I think some of those are, are like I said, you know, kind of secondary accounts, kind of public secondary accounts, 
even though that is still true, Instagram is the one that kids use the most often. Okay? Most kids have Facebook. Instagram is the one that they use. And, um, and, and it's actually the, the social media platform with the largest underage usage rate. Remember? 12 and under is underage. Now, unless it's marked private, any person, anybody on, on, on Instagram can see 100% of what's posted. But if you go to settings, it's just a quick little flip of a switch, and then it becomes private, and then they have to allow somebody to be their follower before they can see their picture. There's a loophole. If, if, if two kids post a picture, one of them has a private account, one of them has a public account, and they're both tagged, that picture will be on both sites. There's a loophole. But um, that is, uh, but that is the, the easiest of all of these to make private. And I recommend that, they, that you insist that your child has that private. Now, um, Instagram does a really good job of putting out some materials for parents. And if you'll go to the privacy at the very bottom of the, go to the website, not the app. You go to the very bottom where it says privacy. There's a whole page uh, for parents. You, you click on this thing, it says tips for parents. And there's a PDF uh, a little booklet of Instagram guide for parents that's really good. There's a lot of uh, frequently asked questions like how do I get uh, a picture of my child taken off Instagram. There's one that says how do I get an underage child off of Instagram. There's a lot of um, suggestions that Instagram has put up for, for, for you. Instagram is now owned by Facebook. Um, and so <clears throat> Instagram is if they'll keep it private and they'll not allow someone that they don't know in as a follower, Instagram is relatively safe, but you as the parent need to either be on Instagram and be a follower or you need another password because if it's private, then that means it's private for everybody. Snapchat. Snapchat is a photo or video um, message site that allows users to take a picture, it's usually a selfie um, and or video clip, and add a text to it and then send it to someone that they have a connection with on Snapchat through the mobile app. Here's the deal with Snapchat. A lot of you know this already. You send a picture and it is, uh, and then you, after you set it up and you say who you're sending it to, then you say, how long you want them to see it for. And they set it from anywhere between 1 and 10 seconds. So, I don't know about you, but I feel like that any, anything that disappears after 10 seconds is, is, um, can promote unhealthy behavior. And so, in, um, Snapchat gives a child permission to do something indecent without this fear of getting caught. And so... Snapchat says that these pictures disappear after 10 seconds. There was actually, uh, and I talk about this in the book, there was actually a, um, um, a, a uh, court case that, that, that proved that Snapchat actually saves the pictures on their server, which they said they didn't do. Now they say they don't do it, so you can take that for what it's worth. Um, but one um, website that rates social media is kind of a social media blog type site said this about Snapchat. Said, quote, hands down, Snapchat is the best app to use if you want to send naughty pictures to somebody, someone. Every picture or short video message that you send deletes itself forever after 10 seconds. And that's where Snapchat kind of has their little hook. That if you want to send a fun picture, um, of two friends then, uh, that anyone can see, you send it on Instagram. If you want to see something that's um, the type of material that you don't want anyone to see but the person you're sending it to and you don't want there to be any proof for anybody else to see, you send it on Snapchat. I'm getting to that because um, here's, here's, how, here's how it works. So. You're on, you're on Snapchat, you receive a snap. That's what they call it. 
Then you have to view it, you have to keep your finger on the screen. If you take your finger off, it stops playing. So you have to keep it on the screen. Now, if you have an iPhone, if you push this button and this button at the same time, it, cre it, it, it does uh, what they call a screenshot, whatever's on your screen. Um, and so they, they felt like, Snapchat felt like that if you kept your, if you had to keep your finger on the screen, then, then, then you know, I guess it, they thought it was harder for them to hold these two buttons down and create it. You know, I mean, because, I mean, a teenager's not going to think to use two hands, right? I mean, they're just going to, like, kind of, so, so anyway, they, they thought that that would work. That didn't work. And so then they put out another update that um, later said, okay, so you figured out how to hold your finger there and still do a screenshot, geniuses. And so now, um, now we're going to send a notification to the sender that says, that that picture you just sent has been has, has has been a screenshot picture. So now that's the case. So you can still take a screenshot of it. It just notifies the sender that you've done it. Kids are genius, right? So what they figured is, you know, other people have cameras and phones too. So what if I watch, keep my finger here and and watch, and look at the picture for the 10 seconds while holding another device like this one? or another phone and take a picture of it that way, okay? And so that's what a lot of kids do. But then some app developers said, hey, we wanna get in on this too, because these pictures disappear in 10 seconds, and they can't be saved in that 10 seconds uh, through the phone, unless you do the screenshot. And so in the book, I give you five apps, there's probably more now because social media is always changing, but there's five apps at least available, I'll give you the names of those, of apps that will run in the background of Snapchat and save the picture. And Snapchat doesn't know that these, these apps are running. And so to give you kind of a, a, a picture of what that looks like, I shot a little video. I have a, one of my college age nephews uh, sent me a snap, and uh, which again, this is supposed to disappear um, and you can see what happens so here. I got my college age nephew to send me a snap and I haven't looked at it yet. So here I go. Um, I'm holding my picture down and he says, good morning. Looks like he just woke up and it's about 1130 in the morning. Um, now I have now held that down. He had it set for a few seconds and that image is gone but I was running a program called Save Snap in the background. And so here is that image on Save Snap. And if I go now to my photos, um, I will send, actually send that picture to my photos and now go to Photos on, and here it is saved forever on my phone. Okay, so very easy to do. So you get a notification, somebody sends you a snap, you go and before you open Snapchat, you open one of these other ones and then you open Snapchat and it saves whatever comes through. So um, <clears throat> you can see that what, what appears to be a secret thing sent from room to room in a private house because it's house made of glass it goes out to uh to to the public we've all known people we've all heard of kids um even friends of ours that have um really struggled with this and and um and so the snapchat is bad news um i recommend that if your child has snapchat then you uh delete it from their phone i'll show you in a minute how to keep it deleted from your phone from their phone um Yik Yak. Now, Yik Yak is just, just like Snapchat. Yik Yak is nothing but trouble. Um, Yik Yak is, uh, it allows uh, a user to post comments anonymously. Now, these next two are completely anonymous. Uh, post anonymous comments that can be read by anybody within a 10-mile radius of where they posted it. So, if I were to post a, a, a uh, Yik Yak comment right here, Within, twin, within 10 miles of here, 
anybody else with the uh, device, with the app, would be able to read it. They wouldn't know that it was me that sent it. So I'm a teenager. I get in trouble by my teacher. I go home, and I call that teacher some names, and I put their name in it, and I send it out, and everybody sees it. No one can prove that it was me that did it. That's, that's Yik Yak. Um, most of the comments on Yik Yak are, are the most vulgar of levels. The app is notorious for gossip, slander, cyberbullying. Um, and, and so after uh, a lot of cases of harassment and, and bullying, the founders, just in their good heart, went on their own. And they created these uh, geofences, which is this digital fence around a certain place that, um, that, uh, makes, that disables the app in that certain place. They went on their um, own good time and they put these geofences in every middle and high school, public middle and high school in the country. And I do know that, um, that this does not include private schools. The private schools are having to go in on their own and get this done and there's question as to if that if that stays, if it's uh, if it works, but and I don't even I don't even know if if the if the public school uh, geofences are still active, but that was something that they that they did because of um, just an excessive amount of harassment and and, and um, bullying claims because of this app. Now, um, I wanted you to see what it looked like, and so I downloaded Yik Yak and I scrolled through it. I was at my house. I live uh, kind of in the Hillwood area, so kind of midtown, and so it was 10 mile radius of that, which would include a couple you know, colleges and, and lots of people. Um, and I wanted to do a screenshot to show you um, what that looked like. Well, it took me a while to find um, a screen full of comments that weren't too vulgar to show here at church. So I did find one, even though it does say War Eagle at the top. Um, Sorry about that, but uh, but um, other than that, everything else is uh, pretty uh, pretty tame. I do like uh, the one in the middle it says, uh, "Granny will have me in church all day tomorrow." Okay, so on a Saturday a few weeks ago, um, I love that one. Um, apparently, uh, Panera Bread on Zelda has cute workers. I never noticed that. I go there often, and uh, I failed to mention I failed to notice that. So I'm glad that Yik Yak could uh, could share that with me. Um, but if you'll see the, the last one, the one about the Panera Bread, um, there's a six next to it. That means six people have rated it positive. Um, there aren't any negative ones on here, but you can rate down and it rate negative. The more um, vulgar the comment, and I'll tell you, it's everything, okay? It's everything. It's everything sexual. It's everything drug-related. It's everything. And... The, the, the more vulgar, the higher the rating. Um, I posted, um, I posted one, one thing one time. Um, I posted a, a partial part of a verse one time, and I, got, uh, I thought I was getting zero. I just want to see what happened, and I started getting, got a couple negatives, but then they kind of came back up, and it ended up as a positive one. So, uh, so I thought, you know, but... Um, so, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's Yik Yak. There's, there's nothing... There's nothing healthy about um, Yik Yak. Whisper is the last one I'm going to talk about here. Um, Whisper is a secret sharing confessional um, promoting app that allows a user to anonymously share their deepest, darkest secrets online with an image, a picture that they find either on their database or their own picture um, that kind of expresses the tone of that confession. Here's what this is. A child is dealing with something, okay? They're, they're struggling with something. So instead of going to a youth pastor, Sunday school teacher, a coach, a mentor, a parent, an uncle or aunt, somebody that can give them wise counsel, they go to a website where they can post it without anybody knowing it's them and then have all these people that are really on the site for entertainment purposes to give advice. That's whisper. And so um, there have been uh, many reported bullying cases. Just like with Yik Yak, people will break up with somebody and then put their name up there with all kinds of slanderous things or a teacher or that kind of thing. 
Um, and and uh, and it's not just the 10 mile radius, it's it's global. Um, the, and, and also, a lot of these sites, they do a lot. They go out of their way to protect the kid rather than help us really protect them. And so if you were to go to your child's uh, Whisper account, um, there's a place where you can look at their history to see what they posted, to see what they've said about themselves in this site. But you have to have a separate pen to do that that they've created just to keep you out and, and keep them using the, the, the app. And so... Um, I looked for one that I could share with you, and again, it took me a while to find one that's, uh, that's, that's appropriate, um, but I thought this one was funny. Um, I've been faking a British accent ever since I started college three years ago. And so they found a picture of a dorm room with a, Brit, with a British flag, and they posted that, and, and that's how it works. But, but note that that's in the very small percents of, of the type of material um, there are some, pay, some, some links where they have questions, so you can either come up with your own you know, confession or you can go to a question. And one of them that I saw that I mentioned in the book says, um, what, is something about, what is something about yourself that your family doesn't know about yourself? And it's everything sexual, it's everything kind of identity confusion, it's everything drug-related, it's everything, everything. And it was just really sad. And I, I was was actually looking at it for research purposes, and I just had to quit. I mean, it was just knowing that this is probably some 13-year-old child who has uh, put this up there and uh, is getting, trying to get some sort of um, comfort from, or some sort of rating, some sort of acknowledgement for what they're dealing with. So I'm going to um, kind of spend the, our last time together uh, going through. Uh, in Chapter 4, I give 10... So guidelines for parents and how to help your child have a healthier, safer experience on some of these social media platforms. But first, um, <clears throat> here's a quote, and it says, they haven't used it. We limit how much technology our kids use from home. Now, the they is the person who's saying it's kids, teenage kids, and it represents uh, an iPad. The person was asked, what do your kids think about the new iPad? And they say, well, they haven't used it because we limit the technology our kids use at home. Now, without saying it, raise your hand if you know who said this. Okay, some of you have kind of looked through chapter four already. Um, Steve Jobs, founder of Apple. Okay, Steve Jobs, who passed away a few years ago, um, said on many occasions that even though he created them, <laughs> he didn't let his kids use them because he knew that uh, the dangers that were associated with some of these devices. And so we can, we can protect our kids uh, in, in, this, in some, some of these ways. First one is too young, or uh, yeah, too young is too young. And, and here again is COPA, the Child Online Privacy Protection Act, requires that a user of at least be at least 13 years of age to sign up for a website that collects personal information. I know this is something that one, parents don't know about, or two, um, there's a lot of tension related to this because mom, everybody else in my class is on Instagram. And, and, and think back, why kids use social media, it's not just some little fun thing that they can spend some time, some spare time in between doing important stuff, kind of looking at their friends' pictures like us, it's, it's, a, it's connected to their social identity. It's a part of how they see themselves and how their friends see them. And so it is a big deal for them to be the only one not on Instagram. But if the whole class was jumping off a bridge, as my parents used to use, you know, it might be socially unacceptable to be the only one not to jump off the bridge. But, you know, that's what I would advise for my children. So, um... So you have to kind of deal with this the way that you have to deal with it. But I will say this, Facebook, Snapchat, I think are two that ask you to give a birthday when you register. Uh, you would have to lie to get to be 12 or younger and get an account in those profiles. Um, Twitter, Instagram, conveniently just don't ask. Now, you have to check the button that says that you've read the fine print that says you're supposed to be 13 years or older, but they're 
12. So they're not going to read. They're going to check the box and move on. Um, they, it's, it's, it's interesting because Instagram used to ask. Now they don't ask. And it's almost because they're the ones who all the underage kids, they have the largest underage usage. So they would lose participants, customers, as, as they were um, otherwise. So they don't ask. Um, check your child's privacy settings. All of these platforms have privacy settings. I told you in, in Instagram, uh, it's just a quick little flip of the switch to go from public to private. Now, when you sign on Instagram, it's public. You have to make the effort to move it to private. But it's a quick little easy thing. On Facebook, um, you, can, you can actually determine who sees what. Okay, You can actually go in even picture by picture, post by post, or in general, you can set it, and you can even make groups. And so um, that, that's easy. Uh, Twitter has a private account that you can select, and so do some of these. Now, the, the ones that I shared, like Snapchat, it doesn't have a privacy thing because it's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and um, and Yik Yak and Whisper, they don't have privacy because they're anonymous. They don't even have, you don't even, you don't even say who you are. You don't even have a profile. You just sign up. So check those because for those ones that I mentioned, you 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 would you would be good to 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 really tighten up those. Next, invest in parent filtering monitoring services. In the book, I mentioned two of these: Net Nanny and My Mobile Watchdog. Those are the two most popular. Here's what they'll do, and here's what they won't do. If you want to protect your computer at home from your child seeing porn or anything else that's inappropriate, get these services, put them on the, in the phone as well. Um, it'll protect website um, surfing and that type of thing. If, uh, but this, it won't touch uh, Snapchat, for instance, because Apple has uh, kind of kept that from, from happening. There is one that I don't mention in the book because I don't know much about it, but it's called MSpy. And it's extremely expensive because somehow they've gone around that. And they say that you can monitor uh, Snapchat and some of these other things. But I, I've not uh, experienced those. So they're great for web surfing and, 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 and even on the mobile side, good for texting, but not good for some of these uh, specific apps. So how do you keep a Snapchat off of your kid's phone because what kids are, what kids do is uh, mom and dad delete Snapchat and then they don't have it anymore. Then they go to school and on the way to school they get it back because it's a free app and when you get it back you just sign back in. And so they have it all day on their phone and on the way home they delete it again and it goes back and forth and kids do this daily. And so um, how do you keep it? Now if your kid has an iPhone um, here's how how you do it. Okay, so you go to settings on your iPhone and you click general. Okay, and so after general, you go right here to restrictions and you click that on. Then you get this box. Now it's going to ask you to do a password. This is something that only you know. So you do one, two, three, four. Hopefully you won't do one, two, three, four. Um, but you do one, two, three, four, and it'll say, it'll want you to do it again. So you do one, two, three, four again, and it takes you to this screen. This is your restrictions. This is, again, on your child's phone, okay? And so if you don't want them to download songs on iTunes, for instance, then you click this from green to white. If you don't want them to um, use the camera for some reason, you click that. Okay, all these you can restrict. Well, you see this one, installing apps, deleting apps. Green means it's on, white means it's off. Flip that to off and then close out settings. When you do that, your child will be riding to school and getting, getting Snapchat again. It's going to say, what's the password? And, you're, and they're going to say, one, two, three, four. And that's why you don't do that. Um, so uh, they, don't know, they can't download. And this is not just that app. It's any app. And they can't delete it either. And so if you're having a problem, 
then this is just one way that you can do it, and you have to keep that password to yourself. Next. Create online ground rules. Okay, this is huge, and a lot of you have probably already done this. Online ground rules. Permissions to use the app. Permissions to download certain apps. Tell your child, do not share their password with their friends, okay? If we were to bring in a bunch of 14-year-old girls in this room and fill the room and say, raise your hand if all your friends know all your passwords to all the apps, all their hands would go up. That's because they don't understand the importance of that. So then they make a friend mad and they get their phone and they start posting stuff and it comes out as them. And so don't share, tell your child, don't share the password, okay? Uh, real quick, um, time shares, the parents know passwords, that type of thing. Next, be friends with your kids online. Be friends with your kids online. If you have younger kids just getting into this, that might be easier than if your kid's 17. They're not going to want you as your friend online, but, uh, but try that. Next, be a good social media example yourself. Okay, don't post stuff that you wouldn't want your kid seeing. Um, you know, just, just be careful there. Um, next, teach your kids the importance of a good online reputation, okay? I've known, I'm, uh, I've known of five situations in the state of Alabama in the last, say, year and a half, two years, where these are things that I've, I've known one personally, and then the other ones I've read about, uh, where kids were either kicked out, some were kicked out of the university, and in two cases they were kicked out of the Greek organization because of social media behavior. Uh, discuss these online behaviors. Have these conversations with your kid. Establish non-negotiables, online non-negotiables. Okay, you will never meet face to face with someone that you've met online. You will, um, you you will not have a secret social media account. I mean, this goes back to the command of honoring your father and mother. And so that's why I said there's there's information, there's behavior, and so you have to kind of balance the two. But um, you will avoid certain platforms. You will not have Yik Yak on your phone. Okay, there's some non-negotiables. And then last, become a social media expert. Okay, the book helps. The book helps, but I recommend that every parent go to Google three times a year and type in most popular social media apps for teenagers because it's always changing and read about this stuff. Okay, let the book start you off, but then do more research as you go. And so um, I think that's our time, but uh, I'll stay here for questions. And uh, please, uh, I encourage you to get the selfie book um, because I, I, I think that it'll really help you. I've really just touched on some of this. So thank you all.